My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself uh, to us and let us know where you're tuning in from. Hi, my name is Emily Jurdy, and I am live from Steamboat Springs, Colorado. All right, Colorado. How far are you from Denver? Um, it's about a three and a half hour drive. We're up in the mountains. Hold on. Ooh, that's a long way. Cool, cool, cool. I got I got a couple of uh, couple of dear friends that are, are from Denver and they still go back and forth, but they live in LA now. So Emily, I wanna jump into it. What is the word stress mean? Does it always have to Could be you... negative? Uh, what does the word stress, stress mean? To me, a stress is a catalyst for a change. I think a lot of times we get a negative connotation for the word stress. Stress is only stressful if you choose to make it so. We have a choice on how we respond to the stressors in our life. I think a lot of times we can shift our thinking to it's just an experience and how we experience depends on how we respond. So for entrepreneurs, how do I find out I'm stressed? Maybe I'm. I don't. Maybe I am stressed, but I don't know. What are the indications that I am stressed? Beside my wife telling me that you're stressed, you need to take a, a walk. Beside that, how else would I know in my business that I'm stressed? <laughs> yes, being an entrepreneur, we you know we find ourselves in you know stressful situations, and at least for for myself on my journey, when. I'm stressed, I know it because things aren't flowing. Things feel hard, things feel like a challenge and I'm tired, I'm exhausted. And instead of playing the victim, poor me, right? This is happening to me. We have to shift our thinking to what am I supposed to be learning from this? How can I change something to make it more of a flow? Is it, you know, it's always a reflection on ourselves. Right. So, you know, usually we try to blame, right? Oh, it's, it's my colleague. It's my boss. It's this, it's that, but really we need to come into ourselves and find out, well, why am I responding this way? So usually it's something simple. Like you just need more sleep. You need some time in nature. You need to go exercise. And we really need to kind of take ownership of those times when we feel that way. What are like the one or two steps that I could take? Or if I'm stressed, should I go tell somebody? Should I seek help? Or should I try to resolve the challenges by myself? I really feel like it depends on the person. For me personally, if I'm stressed, I actually have to do both. So usually I have to go in a quiet place, go for a walk in nature, or even having two young children at home, sometimes it's just... You know, they went to bed and I'm having a cup of tea and I first I reflect, but then the next day when I'm calm and not in the moment, I do talk it out with close friends. I think there's value in talking it out. A lot of times we may feel something, but we need our friend or a colleague to bring it to light and a new perspective. And that often helps. I feel like female entrepreneurs can talk girl talk a lot more guys are not <laughs> we don't call our homies to talk like like i don't know what are your remedies for guys you know it's interesting i i love that you brought that up my husband is very similar and a lot of times he'll discuss it with me right or he does have that one close friend that he can truly trust and i think that's something that as part of you know this new paradigm that we're sort of shifting into i feel like men sort of don't think of it as a girly chat right think of it as a business meeting right just sort of change your perspective on it you know hey and even if you want to make it structured right like hey i've got this this in this situation what's your input how do you deal with this in your business how have you successfully got through this before so almost as like a coaching session <laughs> okay but here's the thing there are two types of conversation in my opinion if I'm calling you, so like like you said, I'm asking for help and advice. But sometimes I just want to call and talk, but I'm not interested in your feedback. And the reason why I say that, not that I don't respect their feedback, is because let's say I have a friend who's an employee, 
right? Mm. And I'm a business owner. I just need an ear to kind of like vent out, just let it out, just talk, you know, say what I need to say, all that stuff, which I also recommend you go into a bathroom, scream, cuss it out, do whatever you want to do. Just let, you said nature. We don't get the nature in LA, so I don't know what you're talking about, nature. <laughs> the bathroom or you get the parking lot. But either way, you just go, let it out at the moment so you don't make those decisions in the valleys of life. And it, so how do I, so you do, so you said that you should call in. So there's two types of call, either vent out or get opinion. Now, how important is it the person that I call to you get their opinion? Because now I want their advice. Who that, that person should be? Is that my mentor? Is that my coach? Is that my business partner? How do I pick that person? That's a really great question. And actually, you know, I think the best way we can, at least I can describe it is I actually use my intuition. So really thinking, sometimes thinking about it deeply, but sometimes just going with your gut instinct, like who is going to be there for me. And, you know, sometimes it's kind of like a self-serving serving sort of thing, right? Like I call a person who I know is going to give me the answer that I want. And sometimes you need to switch it up and be like, okay, who needs to give me some hard truths that I'm not ready to hear, but I need to hear it. So it kind of depends on the situation. I go both ways. Sometimes I need that warm, fuzzy person who's going to tell me I'm awesome. And sometimes I need that person who's going to say, buck up, you're wrong, change your ways. <laughs> because that's very, very important for, especially entrepreneurs, because I think most of the time, we don't need someone to cuddle us. We need someone to tell us, hey, what you're going through is normal. You got to cut through it. Nobody said it was going to be easy. And I think most of the time we're, as a society, we're, I think my, my, my parents' generation, they were more honest and, I don't know, I think they were more brutal when they told you their pain. Now we're trying to sugarcoat it a little bit. And, and that's where I think sometimes, you know, people think they're doing great, but in reality, they're not doing great. Somebody needs to kind of let them know. And then a lot of times we're trying to stay political where we're not worrying about hurting their feelings. So how do we deal with that? Yes, I think that that is actually sort of where we went wrong in the past. I personally, through, you know, writing my book and, and really just doing some really deep soul searching, I've learned that I, my voice was cut off. I come from the Midwest and in the Midwest, it's all about politeness. It's all about, you know, it's, there's this joke that we're so nice, right? But then we stab you in the back behind your back, right? We're like talking behind your back, right? So it's, it's not authentic. And I think what we need as a society is to speak our truth and to be authentic whether that's going to hurt someone or not because again if i'm hurt by somebody's words that's a reflection of me that's my problem if but we shouldn't be telling people you can't be who you are and you can't you know then they're not going to find their their purpose they're not going to take that leap and start that business and write that book if they can't speak their truth so i think it's not speaking your truth like in a mean way right obviously we can't just go around and like bad mouthing people but at the same time, if, if something that resonates with me is going to hurt someone, I can't, there's nothing I can do about that. We're offending it's people just, like just opening a restaurant. Out. If you open a restaurant and I come in there and I'm like your family member or friends or whoever I am, I come in there. If your food is not good or it's not up to the standard, like you will want people to know. Right? Like, I feel like that's what Yelp does. Like, yeah. instead of people talking in the restaurant, telling the chef what's going on or voicing it out. Now, I'm not saying don't be polite. You could be polite and nice about it and be cordial, but you could still say it. But that's what I think, like, you know, reviews are. You know, you couldn't say it in the store and then you have to go tell everybody else about it. Like, I don't understand that. Like, did you try to tell the chef, the restaurant, hey, by the way, can you do this or do this? Or I, my suggestion is this, you know. I think sometimes there could be a lot of good changes. That's a study group. You know, multi-billion dollar companies do study groups because they want to hear the truth from their audiences so that they know if they should adjust or not. So I don't know if in Midwest, we're not getting that. Yeah, and you know, there's that disconnect, right? Like how much more meaningful is it if you're in that restaurant and having that conversation, then there isn't that aggressiveness. You're just like, hey, 
you know, a lot of, we eat here, we love you guys. I've just noticed you use an obscene amount of salt. Have you gotten any feedback from anybody else? Is there any way you can tone it down or even just on my meal? You know, it's just being, I, as, a, as a former business owner and a future business owner, I would rather, ha rather have somebody tell me to my face and tell me what I can do to improve. Again, I think part of the nastiness comes from that disconnect of, sure, I can type up whatever, there's no consequence, but I'm not gonna go be nasty to someone to their face, most likely, you know, it just, it's, it's more intimidating. And I feel like if you don't know as an entrepreneur who you are, that's when you take it offensively, because if you know who you are, then you shouldn't take it because, I don't know, I feel like, there must be, I mean, this is what I found out after I had my first daughter, my only daughter, right? That the reason why babies sleep a lot is because they're growing while they're sleeping. And growth is painful. So when they're sleeping, maybe they, sh they wouldn't feel that pain, right? So if you want to grow as an individual, as a business owner, there must be pain. But it's not a bad pain. It's a good pain. It's a change that is unfamiliar territory that we need to go through. So I feel like a lot of people are trying to avoid pain, but no pain, no gain. Like it doesn't, I mean, it just, I don't know. Do you know it better? No, that's perfect. I love that. And change, maybe even just shifting the word pain to like uncomfortable or growth or change. Like you said, like, you know, think of it, you know, and not that everything needs to be positive. Of course, there's going to be times where you're just like in the dumps and you're in the darkness and you're just, ah, how do I get out of this? And, but that is when we find our most growth. Absolutely. And I think, you know, maybe then instead of, even though you're in the pain, you can feel it, right? Like it's not about not feeling it because feel the anger, feel the pain, but don't dwell. I think that's where a lot of businesses fail and a lot of entrepreneurs kind of get stuck because they're like, this is so hard. I give up. This is dumb. I can't believe I did this. But instead, what is this teaching me? How can I come out of this? Get your support group around you. And, you know, I think you brought it up a little bit earlier with the whole discussion on men versus women. We all have to be okay with asking for help. And I think we've been conditioned that help means we're not as strong or tough or smart. And I think I've learned the hard way personally, asking for help. Sometimes that is the best thing I can do is ask for help. And then I can give help in return once I'm out of my darkness. That's no, definitely. I mean, I do see that some people look at getting help as a sign of weakness. And sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. Sometimes some people are just lazy. You know, they ask questions from me. From me. You know, how do I do this? I'm like, did you YouTube it? Did you figure it out? Like, did you do some studying? Did you, like, did your ass do something about it? Well, I could generally say, you know what? This is a hard one. Like, I got to go, you know, let me help. Or I figured it out. Or when I was trying to figure this out, it took me 10 hours. Let me save you 10 hours. But if you haven't done any research on it yourself, and then you're coming asking for it, that's a different story. You know? It's, uh, it's, it's different. But listen, so here's my, 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 my question for you. What is it that you do? What do you help people with? <laughs> so I'm the author of Minimalist Living for a Maximum Life. And basically it started as we, we moved into a tiny house on wheels, 300 square feet with two children, two adults, three cats and a dog. And that for us was the catalyst of what is important in life. What do I want in life? And because we downsized our possessions, and our expenses, I was able to leap into my entrepreneur career, which started with a book. Um, and now it has evolved into what will be um, like a healing um, service. It's like a healing center collective. Um, it's all in the works, but you know, as you said, it takes research, it takes time. Um, I've got to meet with all the right people. And so basically the minimalist journey and writing my book sort of jumped me into this understanding of who I am and what I can offer and finding my purpose. And everyone's catalyst for that is different. For us, it took the downsizing so that we could really focus on what's important and simplify. I mean, something as simple as not having to clean as much, <laughs> you'd be amazed what that can do to free up the space in your mind. Um, so yeah, basically what I do is I'm a tiny house advocate, environmental advocate, 
um, author. I've got a children's book ready to print um, that is a sustainable children's book. Um, I've got a um, whole, it's a journal for mothers. It's basically affirmations to help them through a natural birthing and mothering process. Um, but all this stuff is in the works and I'm okay with that because part of being an entrepreneur is being patient and right timing. So having a, ten, a six year old and a 10 month old at home, I'm just taking baby steps. <laughs> that is awesome. How do people find you? Um, you can find me on all social media at minimalist living or sorry, mindful minimalist mama. And there you can purchase my book or you can also find if you're more interested in the tiny house aspect, you can find me at tiny house big moments. And then on Facebook, I just launched my um, healing business. So that is Earth Mother Rising. So I've got my hand in everything. <laughs> Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being here with us this morning. Hopefully, we'll get to do more. Keep up the good work. Yes, thank you. You as well. I really appreciate this time with you. You got to Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks.